I'm sure you've seen a train go by before. Well, I, I hope so at least. Most may not notice, but on the rare occasion, you might see a locomotive that looks like something your parents or grandparents might remember seeing years ago. These special engines? They're heritage units. I'm the Winnipeg Rail Fan, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at heritage locomotives and what makes them special. We're going to go in alphabetical order, so without further ado, let's get this shit. Let's, let's get, get this shit. shit. Let's who? Top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. Amtrak has about 29 or so locomotives painted to commemorate past paint schemes. This includes Amtrak 161 in Phase 1, Amtrak 130 in Phase 2, Amtrak 700 to 717 in Phase 3 with an additional Empire Service logo, 161 in Pepsi Can Phase 3, 164 in Phase 4, and new Siemens Charger Unit 301 in the Day 1 scheme. Ew. Some of their older units that were unveiled back in 2011 for their 40th anniversary have since been stripped of their heritage for various reasons. Like for example, Amtrak 156, the original Phase 1 heritage unit, was involved in a wreck. 184 was one of the Phase 4 heritage units until not too long ago when it was wrecked in Texas and spotted not too long after in Phase 5 paint. Personally, I think Amtrak did a spot on job with these units. The amount of care and detail the staff behind making these units put into all of them over the years really shows how much Amtrak cares about their history. Now this next railway on the other hand... I love BNSF. I'll say it again, I'll say it with my chest. I love the Burlington Northern. What I don't understand is why they choose not to do any sort of commemorative locomotives. Like, at all. I know we got the 25th anniversary sticker Jeevos, but really, is a Santa Fe pinstripe SD70 too much to ask for? Well, sure, I whatever, you, you get what I'm trying to say. I may be a hardcore foamer, but I get it. Railways don't necessarily create heritage units to please the idiot's trackside, I'm just saying. But hey, a BN Cascade Green Jeevo for their 30th anniversary would go so hard. Yes, Crash National, the CNSF. In 2021, CN dropped around nine or so heritage units. You're probably thinking nine? 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 Nine, 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 nine. Yeah, nine. Because of course, IC3008, EJ&E3023, Wisconsin Central 3069, BC Rail 3115, and GTW8952. However, there's two yard units and slugs that came out around the same time. There's CN 7600 and 600, painted in the beautiful maple leaf scheme sort of thing, and 7601 and 601, painted in IC Death Star Black. It was honestly crazy to think CN would make heritage units. Like, I never thought they'd even consider it because, you know, it's CN. But you know what? To put it nicely, an attempt was made. Now, if I was to go complete brain rot mode, 3069 is probably the laziest heritage unit out there. Like, I get what they were going for, but wow. What? Did you even try? 7600 makes me even more mad because I absolutely love the CNR Maple Leaf era. The scheme looks dull, outdated to some, but you know, those people probably eat popcorn with a spoon. The point is, how do you mess up your own paint scheme? Like, bro, that's you 60 years ago. How? Ah, oh, whatever. I get that CN didn't use the scheme by the time any low-nose locomotives were around, like the GP38s or SD40s, because of course CN switched their branding in 1960, and the first GP40s and SD40s didn't roll around until like 1964 to 66. But anyways, like I said, an attempt was made. I guess. So hey, hey, I almost forgot about CN 8898. This unit is definitely, hands down, the greatest heritage unit of all time. 
they didn't even try or actually they didn't even need to try with this one. This was just a random SD70M-2. They took it, slapped the IPO25 logo on it, and boom, they're done. This unit is actually meant to commemorate what CN's paint scheme looked like five minutes ago. Um, actually, it's CPKFC. Now, how about, how about this? Give me your liver, okay? I'm gonna live in my own magical utopia la la land and pretend CPKC isn't real. Like, I'm not calling them that. It's like my kryptonite. Canadian Pacific was possibly one of the first railways to release a heritage unit. Around 2000, CP GP38-2 3084 was repainted from action red to maroon gray. Their paint scheme used on diesels from the 40s to the late 60s. 19 years later, CP came out with 10 maroon gray SD70 ACUs, five of which, numbered 7010 to 7014, had the script lettering used on units like the GP30s and SD40s in the 60s, and the other five, 7015 to 7019, with the older block letter style used on early diesels like the E8s in the early 50s. Personally, I think CP killed it with these heritage units. The accuracy on the new ACUs is almost spot on. Like many others, I think CP KFC should do maybe a couple more heritage units to commemorate roads under both the CP rail system and KCS lines. For example, the Sioux line, the D&H, the Milwaukee Road, NDM technically, Mid-South, and of course older schemes like the KCS Klansman White. Yeah, that's definitely not what the scheme's called. TFM Gray, and most importantly, CP Multimark. Like you can't keep ignoring this section of your history forever, CP. The Pac-Man logo's time will come! Also, I forgot to mention, now that CP owns the CMQ, they also have their banger and a rustic heritage unit, SD40-2F 9017. Ah uh, yes, the road with the newest and the most controversial heritage units. Now before we get into them, back in May 2021, CSX repainted two of their 9900 series F40s into Baltimore and Ohio colors with CSX transportation lettering. These units are great looking, I love them. Definitely a step up from how they looked in YN3. And then there's the brand new unit 1827 unveiled in 2023. Their new heritage units were met with some criticism for being, well, weird? Lazy? Honestly, I don't know, now that I think about it. Like, I get what CSX is going for, having the CSX cab and then fading to the other railroad's paint job. Could some of the units, like the Chessie or New York Central one, have been executed a little better? Sure. Do I think they would have looked better in a full engine paint job? Absolutely. But hey, it's nice that they actually did some. Everyone thought that CSX wouldn't ever do them, and we'd be stuck with units with tiny stickers that you could only see if you squinted. But here we are. So far we have 1827, the B&O unit, 1850, the L&N unit, 1853, the New York Central unit, 1869, the C&O unit, 1871, the ACL unit. I don't know why I typed 1891 in the script, but the Monon unit is 1897. 1973, the Chessy unit, my personal favorite. 1976, the Conrail unit. And 1982, the Seaboard System unit. Oh yeah, Chessy System! Number nine, number nine. Metric has, <laughs> metric. Metro has had some heritage units painted to honor railroads their commuter trains have run on in the past, since about 2018, 2019. They got the got doing CNW90, the CBQ211. Oh, they were off by one number. Could have been our friend 210 here. Milwaukee Road 405, Rock Island 425, and the old RTA look on their brand new SD70 number 500. Is it SD70 Mach? Mac? Or is it Mac H? I don't know. These kind of remind me of Union Pacific's units with modern takes on older railroads paint schemes. They don't look too bad to be honest. MTA absolutely killed it with these 40th anniversary units. They've got Conrail 201 based off a scheme on some FL9s, 80s MTA 208, 
New York Central 211. Yeah! And 228 to 231 in New Haven Guinness. Again, I really like these units. They did a great job on adapting these schemes onto modern GE Genesis engines. New Jersey Transit has some pretty nice units as well. They've had them for maybe six or seven years now. I don't really know. NJT 4101 is in the old NJDOT Bluebird scheme. 4109 wears a snazzy CNJ blue scheme. 4210 is in the Erie Railroad's paint scheme. 4519 wears the iconic Erie Lackawanna look. 4636 is in my favorite Railroad's paint scheme, Pansy Pinstripe, let's go! And 4640 is in an 80s era NJT paint job. I think NJD, NJ, wow, NJD. I think New Jersey Transit did a pretty spot on job with these units, especially the 4109. Here we go, no folk shit show. Can't keep a train off the ground if their lives dependent on it. In 2012, for the railroad's 30th anniversary, they dropped 20 of the most iconic locomotives in North America. All right, so starting off with the aces, we got Savannah and Atlanta 1065, New York Central 1066, uh, Reading 1067, Erie 1068, Virginian 1069, Wabash 1070, CNJ 1071, Illinois Terminal 1072, Penn Central 1073, and Lackawanna 1074. And then we got the Jeevos, Monongahela 8025, Conrail 8098, Southern 8099, Nickel Plate 8100, Central of Georgia 8101, Pennsylvania 8102, the N&W 8103, the Lehigh Valley 8104, Interstate Railroad 8105, and NS, like OG Norfolk Southern Railway, 8114. Despite the railroad operating like Penn Central, I think NS did insanely well on these heritage units. The amount of detail and accuracy is nothing to scoff at. Like, in fact, after their little whoopsie daisies moment where they almost wiped out the entire town of East Palestine, and maybe a little bit of getting yelled at by foamers, they went and repainted a couple heritage units. I think 8104 and 1067 to fix some minor details that were inaccurate. Now that is dedication. <laughs> Onion Pacifist. Sean B. from Council Bluffs, favorite railroad. No reason for them to be stopping here. I don't know what Fent Cart UP was smoking back in 05 and 06, but I need it. I just, I need it. Their six heritage units are wacky, but in a good way. I didn't realize they were that old until recent times. CP, CN, and NS, and a few others are just random numbers. CSX units are numbered for when the railroad started, but Union Pacifics are numbered for the years UP killed them. So we got Missouri Pacific 1982, Western Pacific 1983, Newport 1988, Yeah! Rio Grande 1989, CNW 1995, SP 1996. The MKT or the KD and the Rio Grande actually both became a part of the UP in 1988. So I guess they just renumbered the Rio Grande unit to 1989 to not disrupt any canon events, you know? Like I mentioned before, I think UP's units are interesting takes on their fallen flag railroads. Like, the schemes look nothing like what the originals look like, but you could see what they were going for. The company says the locomotives pay homage to those railroads and the generations of men and women who helped build a great nation and the foundation for our future. Aw, how sweet. And then they go and spy on Sean B. Block and block in the street. Can't get around because of this piece of shit right here. All right, speed running stuff from other railroads or stuff from railroads I mentioned but forgot about because I'm a dumb dumb. Amtrak has number 100, the Midnight Blue 50th Anniversary Unit. Alaska Railroad has 4328, painted in an older ARR scheme. 
CP has their F unit fleet painted in the older maroon gray scheme. I don't know what happened to them, but CN had E9As painted in a more accurate maple leaf scheme. I think one got donated to a museum in Illinois. Watco's Ann Arbor has WAMX 3879 in an older Ann Arbor paint scheme. Metro has 104 and 402 to commemorate Chicago and the state of Illinois. The Susquehanna or NYSW has 3029 painted in an older Sus Silver with red stripe scheme. Iowa Interstate has 513 painted in an older Rock Island scheme. Ontario Northland has 1730 in an older green scheme. Carolina Coastal has GP15-1501 painted in the OG Norfolk Southern scheme. Florida Central has a couple GP15s painted in the Seaboard Coastline inspired scheme. And until recently, KCS and FEC brought back older heritage schemes as their main paint jobs. Till FEC rolled out the new Grupo Mexico look. And KCS, well, you know what happened. Now, to answer the question of what heritage units really are, they're meant to, as UP said it best, pay homage to how the railroad company got to where it is today, and of course to the generations of people who helped build great nations working for the companies. Hats off to the people in the shops that paint these everyday locomotives into something special. I'm sure in some cases, like with guys at CSX or NS for example, their parents or grandparents worked for one of the fallen flag railroads and I'm sure it makes them proud to be part of the railroad industry and railway history. I support it and remember the heritage where we came from to be able to keep moving forward. You have to know our past. Now all we need is BNSF and VIA. Oh, don't think I was about to let them slide. I'll be waiting for an original blue scheme F40PH VIA. It's about time guys. Hey! Hey! I hope you <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to all who helped with photos and videos of these choo-choo train engines. As always, thanks for watching. Now get trackside and shoot some of these heritability train engine railroad cars things. <laughs>